guys, it's Crystal, and I've spent about two weeks with the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now that I've had some time with it, I wanna talk about my first thoughts and really the top five new features here. So if you're thinking of upgrading or trying out a MacBook Pro for the first time, let's talk about everything that's new. So the very first obvious change is the display size. May not look that different on the outside, but on the inside we do have a larger display. Going from the previous 15 inch MacBook Pro that this one replaces, that was 15.4 inches, and this jumps to a flat even 16 inch display. So it's not a huge jump, but when you put them side by side, you can definitely notice those slimmer bezels. And when it comes to the display itself, in terms of brightness, also not that different. 500 nits with a P3 color gamut, just like the 15 inch. So again, it's not a huge reason to upgrade when it comes to the display itself, but it's still very much appreciated. Now, a couple weeks back, I made a video of everything I was hoping to see on this new 16 inch MacBook Pro, including an XDR display. Unfortunately, that's not a thing, maybe in the future, but I'm just as excited to see what it's like to use this new 16 inch with the Pro Display XDR since it is coming out soon, especially since you can use two Pro Displays with one MacBook Pro. So. That will be really cool to see. I actually got a chance to see this in action for a little bit, but definitely gonna have to try it out for myself. Now, another very welcome change is the keyboard. They ditched the butterfly keys for the scissor mechanism, a more refined version of that, kind of like the Magic Keyboard that we saw with the iMac Pros. And yeah, it just feels more like a keyboard now. They like bounce back more when you type, feels a lot better, it's definitely more clicky. I personally didn't have any issues with the butterfly keys. I know a lot of people had problems with it, but I never did. That being said, I do like the way this feels a lot more, so I'm glad they went this route. Now on top of the keyboard, touch bar is a little different now. Not the touch bar itself, but more so that it separates itself from touch ID and also the escape key. We now have a physical escape key, which a lot of people were asking for. And again, it's here and very much appreciated. I myself find it very useful when you're full screen in Final Cut, sometimes tapping the escape key on the touch bar just doesn't work. So this way is way more reliable. Now this next feature, nobody really knew was coming, but is definitely one of my new favorite features. That is the speakers on here. They are amazing, by far the best I've heard on any laptop. There's actually a six speaker sound system packed into here. So not only is it louder, but gives you a lot more stereo separation. There's also a lot more bass. And on top of all that, through Catalina, we also get Dolby Atmos support. So not only is it gonna be good for listening to music, but watching movies and TV shows as well. Now, if you have the chance, I would definitely recommend listening to them in person, but just to give you an idea of what it sounds like, let's listen to a song together. Blast it all the way. It's pretty good, especially when you're right in front of it. Can you hear it? Ooh. Yeah, great speakers. Now feature number four is a very unlike Apple move because it is slightly thicker and also a little heavier, 0.3 pounds heavier, which isn't a lot, but more importantly, it leads to a couple different things. So first we have a much bigger battery here. Apple really took it to limits and packed the legal maximum. There's a hundred watt hour battery inside of here. There's also better thermals and better cooling. So even with the same processor as a 15 inch MacBook Pro, we get better performance, which is cool. But when you combine that with the new graphics cards inside of here, performance is through the roof. Now for new feature number five, there's better storage options all around. At the same price, Apple doubled up the storage that you get at base and mid tier. So for the base option, it went from 256 to 512. And for mid tier, it went from 512 to one terabyte. But probably what I'm most excited about is the max out storage is now eight terabytes, which is pretty insane and probably the one that I'm gonna end up picking up. For me, I try to avoid external drives whenever I can. They are affordable and reliable, but they can get a little annoying, especially on a plane. Currently, I have the four terabyte on my 15 inch, which is a lot, but surprisingly, I still managed to fill that up. So the eight terabyte really excites me. But the coolest thing about all of that is it is actually cheaper to get the eight terabyte on the 16 inch than it was to get four terabytes on the 15 inch. So I'll definitely let you know my thoughts on the eight terabyte option when that comes in. But for now, that's been my first look at 
this new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to know about it because I will be doing a more in-depth review all around and testing out further. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later. Hey!